When infections in a person's body become uncontrolled, a condition called sepsis occurs, greatly increasing a person's risk of dying. Dr. Michael Rouser of Mission Hospital in Mission Viejo discusses how modern medicine attacks this problem. Well, sepsis is uh, an infection that breaches local barriers and becomes bloodborne with the sequela of low blood pressure uh, and end organ failure that ensues from having the infection become systemic. This is a serious condition. It affects about 750,000 uh, patients a year, and of those, about 250,000 will die. So the prevalence of mortality is the same as acute myocardial infarction. Uh, so it, this is a, a, a very important disease with uh, wide prevalence and uh, a very serious uh, potential outcome. Well, the symptoms of sepsis are going to be um, initially related to the organ that's become infected. So it could be uh, temperature, it could be chills and, and rigors, which are the shaking uh, response that occurs with this, the infection going bloodborne. Uh, but it could it can be headache, it can be delirium. There are many different uh, uh, sins, signs and symptoms that go along with uh, sepsis. The diagnosis depends again on, on uh, assessing, first of all, history and physical and then putting that together with appropriate tests. So for example, if somebody comes in with a cough and phlegm production and fever, uh, the, the very next test will be a chest x-ray followed by blood tests, which should include white blood, white blood cell count and uh, differential. Well, the treatment, again, is going to be aimed at identifying the organ that's likely to be the or originating site of the infection. And uh, when, when we look at treating sepsis, it's going to, there are unique bugs that tend to go to the different organ systems. So urinary tract infections will look a little different than pulmonary infections. And so as you put together the composite of blood tests, history and physical, and chest x-ray, urine analysis, and those sorts of things, then we begin to aim the antibiotic coverage. Well, risk factors are very important um, because they uh, predispose patients to uh, certain types of infections. So beginning with things like the age of the patient, underlying medical conditions like diabetes, liver disease, alcoholism, uh, renal failure, uh, heart failure, these are all things that are going to predispose to certain types of infection, so that's very important. So the risk factors are important. Um, there are also conditions where immunity is suppressed. So for example, the classic would be HIV, uh, patients with cancer. These are all things that predispose patients to developing infections. And everyone is aware of diabetes as being a major risk factor for all sorts of infections. And again, assessing risk factors is part of how we uh, begin to assess the strategy for treatment. Uh, obviously, when you're, uh, you're not well managed and you have underlying disease and you have no access to care, your socioeconomic status will also influence uh, the severity of the disease and your access to care, which influences the outcome. But it is a disease of, of all walks of life. The course of sepsis can be, um, can be variable and it can be um, a very a fulminant process that kills people within hours. So it, it's, it has great urgency. Those that survive, a gr some will, will recover rather quickly over a period of uh, weeks. Others may, may have sequelae that, that take their rehabilitation process out months and maybe even years because of the severity of the injuries that are occur incurred during the uh, septic state.